Now, let's go deeper about the unit test object. What happens when you create a unit test of a procedure? As you saw on the previous video, when creating a unit test, GX tests automatically generate three objects. A unit test SDT object that is the structure of the test. A unit test data object, which is the data provider based on the test SDT. This is where the test data is defined, including input values and expected outputs. Lastly, the unit test object is a special procedure that tests other objects. In this case, a string concatenation unit test validates expected results through assertions using values from the data collection. In this example, the test executes a for statement that iterates over the data provider. Now, let's take a closer look at this object. This object is a test structure that includes the input parameters of the function, the expected result, and the error message that it shows if the assertion fails. Unit test data is the data collection where you set input and output test values. We will find an auto-generated test case, so you only need to insert the values that you will use. Also, it's possible to define an error message if the result doesn't correspond to the expected. Know that you could make more test cases only by copy-paste the structure and adding the desired data. Next, we will see the test object. This is the auto-generated test object, which contains the following structure by default. A first statement, which iterates over the data provider in order to run different scenarios with different values. An action section that will call the procedure you want to test. An assertion section that will add different validations after running the procedure. Note that the procedure that's being tested has an output variable. This means that when the test will be run, the result will store in a variable and compare to expected one in the assertion section. So what are assertions? Assertions are very important in unit testing because these are the way to validate the expected result. Assertions compare obtained result with the expected result. In this example, the assertion is used to verify that the expected value of the procedure, string concatenation, is exactly my first unit test. This will determine if the test pass or fail. You could add as many assertions as you want, but if at least one of them fails, the test will be marked as fail and the error message will be displayed on the test results panel. Otherwise, the test will pass. You can use assertions for everything, like check if database table rows are expected to ones or to check if an SGT has the right data. We will explain these scenarios later. Currently, there are only three types of assertions to use for comparing desired values. Assert a string equals to verify that two strings are equals. This is the most generic and useful function since almost any structure can be serialized as a string. For instance, if you want to test a procedure that uses an SDT as output, you can check its value by comparing the SDT as a JSON string. Assert numeric equals to verify that two numeric values are equal. Assert bool equals to verify that two boolean values are equal. You will see an example with the last one in a moment. When the test has finished, the result will be displayed on the right panel. And if you click over the executed test, you will be able to appreciate more detailed information. In the execution detail panel, you can see the results of each assertion. By clicking on click to expand button, you will be able to see highlighted differences. 